And we're not going to try the case in the press. I doubt that any one of you for a moment have even contemplated the possibility that they have the wrong guy. Accused Gilgo Beach serial killer Rex Huerman appears in court briefly as his case moves forward. Suffolk County's district attorney is confident Huerman is the man responsible for the murders of three women. Well, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to I'm not going to speak for the victims. The victims are um, there. They'll speak for themselves. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. I'm Anjanette Levy. Rex Huerman appeared in Suffolk County Court for a brief hearing Tuesday. The prosecutor handed over eight terabytes of discovery to Huerman's attorneys. That's a massive amount of information and just the beginning of the process. Law and Crime producer Alyssa Fisher was in the courtroom for the hearing. Rex came in and he was in handcuffs. He was in a dark suit. Um, his hair was slightly unkempt, uh, very similar to how he looked in his mugshot. And he stood through the hearing. The hearing was brief in itself, but he stood the whole time. And sporadically, he would turn around to look at the big group of reporters all in the stands behind him. He didn't look disturbed or um, stressed by any means, but it was almost like curiosity of turning around and looking to see the gallery, um, who was there, how many people were there. It was a packed house. There were a lot of us standing in line. More people had to go into the overflow room. So he kept looking over to maybe to see reactions. Two victims' families were in the courtroom but chose not to speak. Huerman has pleaded not guilty to the murders of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. Their bodies were found wrapped in camouflage burlap along Oceanside Parkway in 2010. The DA says Huerman's DNA was found in the burlap. Huerman is also the prime suspect in the murder of Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Eight sets of remains were found on Gilgo Beach in 2010 and 2011, including those of an Asian male and a toddler. Shannon Gilbert's remains were discovered in 2011, but Suffolk County police believe her death was an accident. They have said, though, that they are open to looking into tips about her death. Following the brief hearing on Tuesday, District Attorney Ray Tierney, who will lead the prosecution, spoke outside of the courthouse. This is a 13-year case, so as you saw, uh, we have a, a great uh, deal of, of um, information, evidence, photographs, reports to provide uh, to the defense counsel. We've, we've begun that process. I think it was uh, eight gigabytes of, of material, which is a, a tremendous amount. Uh, and that's just the beginning. We're going to continue to do that on a rolling basis. And, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, th this case, uh, the, the, the charges in the indictment are just allegations. So this is the first step uh, in uh, the process of, of proving those allegations. So we look forward to, to uh, under, undertaking that process. Um, you know, uh, we, we've spoken to the victims. The victims are not going to be making any, they, they've elected not to make uh, any uh, statements at this, uh, to the media at this time. Uh, they want to maintain their, their privacy. They are obviously interested in the case, uh, but they're not going to be speaking to the media. Tierney was asked about DNA evidence that he says links Huerman to the murders. Meanwhile, Huerman's attorney spoke about his client. Well, he's incarcerated. You know, he's a man who's never been arrested before. He's maintained his innocence from the inception of this case. Uh, so he's doing the best he can at this point in time. He's looking forward to having his day in court. Attorney Michael Brown said Huerman has had contact with his wife and other family members, although his wife has not visited him. Brown says he's not representing Huerman in his divorce. Brown says his focus right now is on preparing the case for trial. This case is a case that we're going to try in a courtroom. I, I, the press has convicted my client without seeing a shred of evidence. So he doesn't stand a chance with the press. And we're not going to try the case in the press. I doubt that any one of you for a moment have even contemplated the possibility that they have the wrong guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to defend this case in a courtroom. In the courtroom we just were in, where we have 12 fair and impartial jurors, where we have a fair and impartial judge, where words like presumption of innocence and beyond a reasonable doubt, where words like that reign every day. That's where we're going to try this case. So we're not going to try it in the press. We're going to do our due diligence. We're going to defend this case in a court of law. The dis district attorney's office has a whole office. They're the biggest law firm in this county. I'm one guy, right? Okay. So Ms. Koish is going to be co-counsel on this. 
We have other attorneys that I expect are going to be assisting on this. And just to pour through the discovery is, is an enormous task. A reporter asked Brown about what Hurman has said to him about the murders. What has my client told me? He told me he didn't do this. Brown seemed less than optimistic about the case being resolved. He says the case will go to trial. There's no plea deal. He said from the moment I met him that I did not do this. So we're prepared to go forward. We will defend this case in a court of law and we will go to trial in this case. Meanwhile, law and crime went to Hewerman's neighborhood and attempted to contact his estranged wife, Asa Ellerup, about his arrest. She looked exhausted, to say the least. Just bloodshot. Her lips were pale. She looked like she, I'm sure, had maybe just woken up from a nap. She was in a loungewear. She just looked sad as she said, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm not interested in speaking right now. And um, completely understandable. She's had a really difficult few weeks. Um, but it was a very brief interaction, possibly 10 seconds. It was, she was very cordial as she said, no, thank you, and closed the door. The investigation into the bodies found on Gilgo Beach is far from over. Meanwhile, Hurman will be back in court on September 27th for a conference to keep the judge updated on the progress of the case. Hurman remains locked up in the Suffolk County Jail where he is held without bail. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.